Blog Talk Radio. Lori Smith. I'm glad to be here. This is One Child Abuse Survivor to Another uh, Restoration. And uh, it's been a while since I've done a show. <laughs> so I've been doing about like one a month here now and lately uh, for a while now. But um, I keep wanting to do shows and then I'm just either too exhausted or, or actually so a lot of times I forget to do them because I don't have them scheduled. I used to have a, it used to be like on Blog Talk Radio, there used to be an automatic scheduler. And you could set up your show and it would schedule it for like, you could schedule like months ahead. It was great. And now you have to literally go and, and you have to schedule these things one at a time. And a lot of times I want to do a show and I don't have one scheduled. And I'm like, oh, I'm just too tired. But I do think about it and uh, it's not that I don't want to do them. So I'm sorry I, I haven't been around. Um, yeah, it's June 3rd. It's uh, 10 o'clock here in the evening. Calgary, Alberta, same place, same situation. Um yeah, just glad to be able to keep doing these shows. Hopefully they're helping somebody out there. I know people are still listening to my shows, and that's amazing. I appreciate everybody who's taken the time to, to listen to what I've had to say, and hopefully they're help, helpful for survivors of abuse out there, for anybody who's who may know you know, someone who's been abused and not sure how to deal with the situation. Um, so hopefully they're helpful for you know, even just for the public at large. But as my goal was to be just another voice out here, you know, speaking out on behalf of survivors of abuse. And um, I used to do more shows on, um, like, child abuse prevention stuff. And so just to be another voice, to add to all the other voices, really. And I found that this was very helpful for me to talk about this stuff because I had kept it all, you know, sort of tucked away in drawers, put away safely so that no, you know, nobody would know about my past or my situation. I kept it pretty much to myself for a long, long time until it was about ready to implode. And um, so I didn't really reach out until I was about the age of 42. So that's, uh, I just like to be a voice of encouragement for people out here, you know, to get help and to reach out. There is help out there. You have to look for it. So a lot of times it's not, if a lot of times, you know, it's not going to come to you. You have to literally go out and look for it. Um, you know, I'm still working on getting some things done. So working through some things. And, um, so it's, I don't know if it's uh, ever something that, you know, I'll ever be able to say, Oh, I'm healed. I feel great. And, you know, life is wonderful, and I mean, things come up, and situations come up where it's just a whole other challenge with sort of the same set of issues, just a different circumstance, and I'll have to go through some work again to to deal and cope with the sort of uh, the issues that are going on in my life, right? So, you know, anything can come up like that. Um, we know life is a struggle for everybody. We're all struggling in one way or another. And so I would say just make sure you keep looking for help and reaching out and, you know, reaching out and getting some help, right? So, yeah, this is a this is just a, a, a half-hour show that I'm doing, and we'll just continue on. We're looking at boundary work, um, which is really important. I still have issues with boundary work. I'm a lot better than I used to be 
with boundary issues, but um, I still have work to do. You know, I don't recognize a lot of times because I didn't. There were no proper boundaries for me when I was growing up, so I don't recognize healthy boundaries, and I have to literally be on guard for this stuff. And a lot of times, I don't have my guard up, and I end up being taken advantage of, or or just kind of railroaded um, without even realizing it until it's too late, and then I'm like, oh. And then I don't like the fact that I've been railroaded, and I I get extremely upset and leave the situation or whatever. You know, instead of addressing the situation, I tend to just leave because I don't like confrontation. And so it's a tough situation for survivors of abuse, right? And, you know, for people that haven't been abused, you know, God, I mean, that's wonderful. Thank God that not everybody's been abused. People know what it's like to be hurt, though. And for people that go around intentionally hurting people, you know, I just, I, I, I some, you know, seriously, like I pray terrible curses on them. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I'm not a very nice person. Because, you know, there's no reason to go around intentionally hurting people, but people do it all the time. Right. And, uh, but, you know, I'm always calling fire, calling, calling lightning down on these people, you know, like, <laughs> like instead of praying for them, you know, I'm like, Lord, strike them dead, you know, curse them, right? Because I hate evil, wicked people. I grew up with evil people. Um, I grew up being abused horrifically by people that would then put a smile on their face and go to the neighbor's house and everybody just loved my parents. They just loved them. They just adored them. My parents had lots of support from a lot of different people who thought they were just wonderful people. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, well, they were wonderful when they wanted to be. They were nice to the neighbors and they were nice to the neighbors' children, but they weren't nice to each other when they got home and they weren't nice to their children. They just had severe marital problems and their own issues, you know. So I grew up with evil people doing evil things and then, you know, getting away with it, right? So um, this is not uncommon. So many people have gone through this and know what it's like. So then when I meet other adults out in the adult world that I live in today who are evil people and then go on and smile and trick people and fake people out, I just hate them. I hate them with a passion and I call lightning down on them and I'm like, God, strike them with a curse and kill them. And Because I hate evil people. I really do, but I guess we, you know, that's a topic for another another night. <laughs> I'm just on a bit of a rant here tonight. <laughs> like, but this boundary issue is such a huge issue, and um, if you want to go back and listen to the last show, there, I'm not going to repeat it. This is for, it's from Help for Adult Victims of Child Abuse, Havoka, H A V O C A, and you can go to their website and pull this up. It's from the Information for Survivors tab. Just go to that tab there on their website. And go to the personal boundary section, and we're looking at this consequences section. And um, you can go back and and take a look, like go to the website and read through this. This is really quite interesting, because you know this is something that I deal with all the time. That's a problem for me. It's it's a uh, it's boundary boundary issues. Right? I try to be really careful with mine and really respectful of people, because I know what it's like to hurt people. I know what it's like to be hurt. So. Um, you know, if I do do something that's a bit of a boundary issue for someone, I, you know, and someone tells me that something I'm doing is bothers them, then, you know, I need to try to make it right, just as I would expect for them to do the same thing. A lot of times as survivors, because as children being abused, you know, it's not like, um, you know, people who grow up in these unhealthy family situations, even if there isn't any physical abuse and it's all just mostly, you know, verbal, emotional psychological abuse, which is really more damaging, I think, than the physical abuse, um, because I was abused in every way, so I know, um, you know, this, there's still no room for the child to say, you know, um, to the to whoever's hurting them in the family that they wish that they would stop, and even if they do, chances are the, the abuser in the situation is not going to stop what they're doing, but that's kind of sort of sets us up as adults then to think that we don't have any rights, and we don't have and, and and really, how dare we speak out if someone's doing something that we don't like? Um, you know, what? We're not supposed to say anything. We're supposed to just sit there and take it and 
they wouldn't take it if we were doing that to them. So why would we assume that we're supposed to sit there and take that garbage? So that's why I have no problem with telling people, like I'm I'm better as an adult now. I'm, I'm an older adult. <laughs> I'm like a grandparent age. I'm like 53 years old, but I, I, you know, I don't mind telling people to f off right to their face. You know, I'm just, I have no problem with that. People that piss me off, but I'm trying to be a good person, and so you know, I'm working on that so that I don't become my abusive parents, right? And so basically, I just look at them like, you're sick. You seriously need mental help, and I'm not going to have. I'm not going to be around you. I will not allow people to mistreat me in any shape, any way. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's a boss. I don't care if it's a friend. And so, therefore, it's a very lonely existence because people are always doing something to try to hurt somebody. It just pisses me off. And I'm like, this isn't little stuff. This isn't little stuff that you can kind of blow off because, you know, that's easy to do. It's easy to blow off little things, especially when you care about somebody or you like a job and, you know, let's say you really like the place where you're working at. You can blow off some little stuff. It's no problem. But when somebody starts making making your, your life miserable there and there's nothing you can do about it, it's kind of like, what do you do? If they're not going to change and there's no help for you there and nobody's going to back you up, then you have to move on. And this is a sad situation for so many people, right? That's why I'm calling lightning down on people. And I'm like, Lord, you got to you know, zap them or do something because I'm sick and tired of these evil people getting away with crap. It just it just makes me so mad. But anyway, this article is really all about that. It's it's a serious issue for survivors of abuse. You know, um, they they go on to say here we're about halfway through the paragraph here. It's very this is a section that's called consequences. So if you go to Havoka, Help for Adult Victim, Victims of Child Abuse, H A V O C A, it's uh it's called consequences under their personal boundaries tab. And it says, since behavior patterns are quite ingrained in all of us, it's important to allow the other person some wiggle room to make a change in behavior, unless the behavior is really intolerable. So they said to go from one extreme to the other is a reaction to a reaction and is codependent. There are choices in between which are sometimes hard for us to see if if we are reacting. So as they said, to go from tolerating verbally abusive behavior to leaving a relationship is one step, in one step, is swinging between extremes. It is helpful to set boundaries that allow for some gradual change. And um, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, to me, yeah, I mean, you have, it's sort of, it depends on the situation totally. I mean, all situations are going to be different. Like they said here, this is just an example. Um, when this person asks another person what's wrong, and then that person says, oh, never mind, and then slams cabinet doors and rattles pots and pans, and generally seems to be silently raging about something. Um, this person says, I feel angry, frustrated, irritated, hopeless, uh, you know, as if you're unwilling to communicate with me, as if I'm supposed to read your mind. So this is a situation where they're sort of making up a pretend situation of, you know, this person saying, if, 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 if let's say it's a partner situation, you know, um, and one person says to their partner, you know, what's wrong and then they said they say never mind and they start slamming cabinet doors and stuff um it it causes the other person to feel uncomfortable obviously ang- uh, angry frustrated irritated hopeless and because that person doesn't want to communicate with them so they said here if you want to communicate with me and help me to understand i have done something that upsets you if something is bothering you and you will not tell me what it is i will not confront you about your behavior and share my feelings if you continue that behavior, I will confront your behavior, share my feelings, and insist that we go to counseling together. <laughs> so this is uh, something that, you know, it's like a uh, just an example of, I guess, it's a, of something that, you know, you could do in a certain situation. To me, it's kind of, I mean, normally people that are behaving that way need to be, it, it needs to be brought to somebody else's attention, I think, as well. And there, there should, because if you try to confront their behavior, they're gonna all they're gonna do is look at you like you're crazy. That's a narcissistic person. That's a like a narcissist would do something like that, and then make it out like, oh, you're just imagining things, you're just this and you're just that, right? Whereas if you have somebody who witnesses that behavior, who can witness that behavior, and 
then then there's a witness involved and that person can't get away with that gaslighting narcissistic garbage that people will quite often pull on somebody um otherwise it's kind of like you know you just take and uh, what are you going to do it's kind of like either stay with that person even if it's a friend or a family member or you know like a saying a partner or something you know ask them to change are they going to change probably not people are pretty comfortable especially when they're the ones that are the aggressor slamming cupboard doors i've been around that my whole life you know people slamming doors and slamming me into doors and you know different things like that you know as just a means of controlling the situation that's what abuse is right so it's like a lot of times people are very comfortable being on that side they like doing what they're doing. They like to be the aggressor, right? And they don't mind hurting you. They don't mind hurting little children. They don't mind hurting adults. They don't mind hurting anybody because they like to be the one that's going to hurt somebody, not the one who's going to get hurt. Right? A lot of times that's it. So what do you do in that situation? You either stay and put up with it or what? Get, ask the person to get counseling. Are they going to get counseling? Probably not. My parents were both abusers. They abused each other. They abused their children. They were told to get counseling. They went to like two or three sessions. That's it. They liked that lifestyle. They enjoyed it. Now that's sick and twisted because at the end of the road, you know, they're both crying the blues about how horrible their life was, and not even caring about what they did to their children, which is why I threw a fit at them. And my two abusive parents, I'm like, you got to be kidding me, you guys. And you didn't even care what you did to your children, and here you are crying the blues all the time about how horrible your life has been as as adults. They couldn't see it. They couldn't see what they couldn't see what they had done. It was, it was just somebody doing something to them. They just felt like they were the victims in the whole thing, and they couldn't see that they were the actual ones that caused the whole problem in the first place, and abused their own children, and caused their own children to have these horrible, miserable lives. And most of them are dead. Like I was saying, most of my siblings are gone now. But you know, is somebody going to change? Not unless they really, really care about you. If they really, really care about you, they might. Otherwise, they probably won't. I, I even, I, 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 my first love of my life was like that, and it was going to be a bad situation. And that's why I'm, I'm really glad that we split. I mean, like we were only together for like a year and a half, we weren't married or anything, just seeing each other. But the thing is, is he was slamming cupboard doors and not talking to me and pouting and becoming abusive like he would hit he would punch a cabinet instead of my face right so he'd punch, he'd, he'd swing his fist at my face and then punch a cabinet instead and I was like well I was used to that I grew up being hit by my parents and beat up and trash so you know I was like great so now he's gonna start this crap so I was like I don't think so so I'd be telling him off and I'd be like I, I'm not putting up with this from you it, so we broke it off which is a good thing because it would have been a bad situation. One of us would have probably ended up murdering one of the other. <laughs> it, would have, it would have been just my parents all over again, right? So um, if a person's not going to change, it's better that they do go away or that you go away, right? Um, because abuse is abuse. And sometimes people don't care if you set down these boundaries and you set down these consequences. If they don't really, if they don't care enough to make a change... Your life is not going to change. It's going to be, it'll be miserable. Right? So, this boundary work is is a situ, it's a, such a serious situation. Most, like I was saying in my last show, I spent half the show talking about the fact that people don't care that they hurt people. So most people don't care about their behavior. So if you confront them about their behavior, they don't care. That's what happened with my with my siblings. I've only got two siblings alive now. Maybe I don't even know if they're still alive or not because I don't talk to them. But Really, some of the last conversations that I had with him was the fact that, you know, if if we don't need to be in any kind of a relationship if um, we're not going to treat each other right. I mean, I was like, if, if I'm doing something wrong, I need to apologize. If you're doing something to hurt me, then you need to apologize. Well, they wouldn't go for that. They just wanted me to be me to be the one to apologize, but they were never going to apologize. For, for saying horrible, horrible things to me and knowing that it was hurting me. So I was kind of like, okay, this reminds me a lot of when I was growing up and having to deal with my abusive parents and my abusive siblings growing up at home in an abusive home 
Well, now I don't have to take it because I'm like a 40-year-old woman, and I can tell them all where to go. So I did. I told them all to go away, and they did. And I'm happy because I don't have them in my life causing me problems anymore. But it's a sad situation when you confront people that are supposed to love and care about you and say, look, if I make a mistake, I'm going to apologize. You know, you need to tell me if I'm doing something that's causing you to feel bad or whatever. I need to apologize, and I will. But I need the same from you, right? I need you to do the same thing for me. And if they refuse and you stay in that relationship, you're going to get you're going to be continually hurt and run down and run around or abused even if it's that situation if that's if it's that kind of situation. Um and you know, or you need to get out one or the other. And it's a sad sad situation that people don't care enough. Like I even told my sister, I said, if I do something that's gonna that hurts that hurts you, I mean, because I had to apologize for some stuff that I had done in the past, mainly that I had said, because I really never did anything to my sister that was bad. I just said some terrible things to her, but we 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 all said terrible things to each other. It's just that's how we grew up. So you know, so I apologized for the stuff that I said to her because she was always calling me on it. She was always you know making me feel bad because of some of the stuff that I told her. I said, that's okay. I do. I, I, I understand your frustration and I understand that you're mad and angry that I said those things and I apologize. I dearly, really, truly apologize. And I was serious about it. She knew it. Then I asked her to apologize to me for some stuff that she had done to me that I needed an apology for. And she wouldn't do it. And I'm like, so great. So I apologize to you, but you're perfect. This is where, you know, this boundary stuff, it doesn't always work. If the other person is not willing to um, do their share, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. You either sit there and take their garbage and their abuse, whatever type it is, emotional abuse, psychological abuse, you know, verbal, physical, sexual abuse, whatever it is, spiritual abuse. You either take their garbage or move on. And sometimes you have to move on. For me, I had to move on. I was like, you know what? I'm not tolerating any more garbage from this family that was never a family in the first place, from these people that just want to hurt me and really don't care about me and actually have said that they don't care if I live or die to my face. And, you know, I mean, I had to listen to my parents telling me they didn't care if I was alive or not. I mean, why should I care about these people? You know, why should I care about these people that don't care about me? Sometimes you can put a lot of time and a lot of energy into caring about people that do not and are not and will not ever care about you. And it doesn't matter how good you are or what kind of a person you are. You might be the most wonderful person in the world to them, and and, and, and they still don't care. You know? You're wasting time. Valuable, valuable time. But sometimes people are like, well, I'd rather do that than be on my own, than be lonely. To me, it's better to be on your own and be lonely. <laughs> much, much better. I am very much on my own and very lonely. Now that my husband's gone, he's passed on. But it's a better place to be because the people that are in my life, I do have some friends that are that live near me, that are that treat me decently, and I love them. And I don't see them all the time, you know. But that's okay. Um, people just can't. You just can't hang around with people all the time. You know what I mean? Um, but they are good to me nice to me and they do genuinely care about me and that's a wonderful thing to have real true friends than somebody who just dumps on you and makes you feel like a horrible piece of garbage all the time and hurts your feelings what's the point of hanging around with somebody like that you know whether it's a friend or like I'm saying like a girlfriend boyfriend whatever partner husband wife you know sister brother whatever parent why hang around with somebody like that this is going to treat you like crap um just you know, trying to see if they'll ever change. <laughs> I went through that with my whole entire family, including my dad, who snowballed me at the age of like 45 or whatever it was when he moved up here as an old elderly elderly man, which is the reason I went public with my stuff in the first place. You'd have to go back many shows to hear about that one. But <laughs> the issue is, you know, uh, here I am thinking that we, things are going to change between us because he snowballed me into thinking that they that they would. And that we could actually develop a relationship, you know, and he, and, he, and he totally, totally went like a sneaky snake, 
had no intention on changing his behavior around me, treating me like garbage. And and I even have witnesses because my sister witnessed it. He's a terrible, terrible man. And, you know, he's dead now, thank God. And uh, good, good riddance to him. And um, he was a horrible man, horrible, horrible man. And I mean, he had he had snowballed so many people that thought he was just such a great man. He's a Christian, you know. Oh, your dad, he's so nice. I'm like, well, you don't know what he did, but now you can read the books and find out, <laughs> or just you know, go to my website and check out all my free stuff, my Born in Hell website, <laughs> my books. I don't care. I don't want the money for those books. I donate all the money to to NASCA and to other places, not for profits. I'm not interested in the money for those books. And you can read them for free if you want. Just go to my website, Born in Hell. And type in Born in Hell, Lori Smith, or you can just go to um, um, author Lori Smith at Weebly.com. And it's my Born in Hell website. I've got all kinds of stuff there. And, you know, if you're if you're interested in picking up any, like, these shows in order of what I was talking through, like anger, I did whole months, months, months of sections of, you know, two or three shows a week on just dealing with anger and stuff like that and anger management. And um, oh, looking at all kinds of stuff, it's all um, sort of a, it's all uh, listed there. You can, it's easier to see than it is on Blog Talk Radio, because yeah, on Blog Talk Radio they didn't put any show categories or anything like that, because I was doing so many shows and I just couldn't keep up with it. So um, on my website I went and I put what show it was, what topic, and the website information where you can get the information that we were talking about. It's all there on my website if you want to go check that out. And, um, but yeah, it's just a huge issue, this, um, boundary stuff. Next up, we'll look at, um, choices, personal boundaries, choices, setting boundaries and stuff. Um, the choices that we might have as far as um, setting these boundaries, right? And manipulation and stuff like that. So we'll take a look at that next. So thanks everybody. I appreciate you being here. And it's all like this half hour goes so fast. It's unbelievable. I did set another show up for next Monday night because I'm seriously going to try to do these. Um, I just quit smoking uh, cigarettes actually three weeks ago. That's what I've been doing for the last while is working on quitting smoking because I needed to. You know, my health is my my breathing was just getting so incredibly bad. And um, so I'm feeling a lot better now. And uh, my nerves aren't so bad. Like I I feel better now that I'm not smoking and I'm actually vaping instead. But so it's still an addiction with the nicotine. But you can wean that out, see? So it's a great, great thing. And um, so I'm working on stuff like that. I'm, I, I'm doing that sort of thing. But I haven't done a whole lot of other type work as far as my healing journey goes. But like I tell I, all, you know, all my survivor friends, you know, just keep working on it. Little by little, keep reaching out. You know, join, you know, the ASCA has adult survivor groups. I actually was doing a... a a lead facilitator for a group, my own group in Calgary, and an online group. And I had to, my husband passed away there, so I dropped the the I dropped the whole thing for a while. But I do like doing that because I like I need that myself. I need the interaction with people, so it's very helpful. And you can join up anonymously, right? You don't have to give your name. You can just you know you can join with a, a fake name and just get some help, right? Whatever you do, keep reaching out. And do not struggle on your own, you know. It's just too it's too hard, it's too difficult to have to do this on your own, right? So make sure that you do get some help. We've got about a minute left. But yeah, we'll pick up the rest uh, the next part of that article. It's kinda of lengthy actually. You can go to their website, Havoka dot org and um check out the rest of it there. Just some good info. But um yeah, if you need any resources or information, you can go to NASCA. That's I'm the um Alberta Ambassador for NASCA, N A A S C A. That's the National Association of Adult Survivors of Child Abuse. And uh, there's all kinds of information there for for survivors. There are uh, it's survivors helping survivors, right? So if you need help, go there and get that in, get get the help that you need. There are people there that are willing to chat with you anytime. And so, you know, if you need somebody to talk to you, you reach out to somebody, even just reaching out to a crisis line. Make sure you reach out and get some help, right? Take it easy, everybody. Until next time, we'll talk to you next Monday night, same time, same place. Bye-bye.